a model steamboat named Edith, this is part 30, finishing the piping of the steam plant. Before I get on to that though, I would just like to thank all of the people who took the trouble to write in and tell me how horrible this small green part looks. I find it really weird that the trolls and keyboard warriors come out and start commenting before the job's finished. This is nowhere near the finished job. All I can say is, just keep watching to the end. You will see what I do with this to make it match the rest of the not exactly perfect paintwork on the rest of the model. There are only about three episodes to go before this model is finished. This one is about finishing the piping, and it's a bit of a piping extravaganza. So if you don't like piping, I should turn off now. Or maybe write in and tell me how to do it. Why have I put a loop on the piece of pipe at the gas canister end? Simply because this piece of pipe at this point gets moved around a bit, as the gas tap is unscrewed and screwed onto the gas canister fairly frequently. No such loop is required at the other end though. This is a straight fitting onto the end of the gas cutoff valve, and it's never really going to get moved about, so there's no need for a loop here. This part of the piping job is fairly tricky, and it gets much worse with the water piping. This copper pipe is one eighth of an inch in diameter, so it's very easy to bend with your fingers. But the pipe runs still need to look quite neat. And if you bend the pipe in the wrong place and then straighten it again, it's going to start looking a bit messy. If you do mess up, just discard the pipe. It'll come in useful for something else later on. After the piping was fitted to the gas canister valve, via the cutoff valve and down to the burner, I thought it was a good idea to test it. The gas cutoff valve works perfectly and there are no leaks. And I didn't leave it on for long because there's no water in the boiler. It's a good idea never to leave the gas tap permanently attached to the canister. Always disconnect it after use. It's time now to continue with the water piping. This is a short piece of pipe that goes from the clack valve or check valve to a T-piece. And when it's cleaned up a little bit it looks like this. It's always a good idea to clean the piping, even though no one can see it, that is not the point and if you leave any flux residue on the piping, it will turn green and look really horrible. In this clip, I'm fitting a commercial T-piece to the end of the short piece of pipe. There is one minor problem. I do not have any nuts of the right size or the right thread form to fit onto the fittings on the pump. I found one brass nut in a box that fitted, but I would like a matched pair of these type of nuts, so I need to make some. Therefore, I need to know what the thread is. The first die that I tried was 3 8 by 32 threads per inch and that didn't fit. And also, I didn't show it on the video, but I tried 3 8 by 26 threads per inch and that didn't fit either. But then in my box of dies, I found one that fitted the thread perfectly. I did actually have a good idea what the thread was, but I needed to confirm it. I'm not going to use a die anyway, I just need to use a corresponding tap. But the easiest way to find out the size of a thread is to put a die on it. And as you can see, this is 1 8 BSP. BSP stands for British Standard Pipe, and I have just one tap which is 3 8 BSP, but this is no good because it sharply tapers at the end, so I just ground it down on the grinding wheel. Then it was quite an easy job in the lathe to make these two brass nuts. Normally 3 8 by 32 or 3 8 BSP is for quarter inch pipe, but the pipe I want to use in the boat is 3 16 of an inch in diameter, that's why I'm using these special adapter unions. It's a good idea to make some of these and keep them in a box in your workshop. The outlet pipe from the pump to the T-piece is shown in place in this clip. There isn't much space in this part of the boat and all the piping has to neatly fit underneath the condenser. Now I need to bend a long length of copper piping to go from here, which is the inlet to the pump, from the tank's water outlet. To bend this pipe I'm using a combination of a pipe bending tool and my fingers. This was quite a difficult job. It took quite a while to get it to exactly the right shape. It's shown in this clip after I silver soldered the unions on the end. And the last piece of pipe that goes from the T-piece underneath the condenser all the way to the tank's water bypass valve, which is mounted on the bottom of the front of the tank, was even more difficult to bend. The trick is leaving the pipe long enough to accommodate the bends, but not too long that you can't try it in place. Usually I cut the pipes too short and have to make a new one. I got this one right the first time, silver soldered the unions on the end, and now it's time to fit it in place, and it looks like this. These two quite long lengths of copper pipe still need a little bit of tweaking to make them look good. 
but they'll be okay for now. I think they'll do the job. Fitting the condenser in place is going to be the last job. I haven't bolted the engine in yet. It's just sat in the bottom of the boat. What I'm doing in this clip is filling the water tank, just to make sure it doesn't leak. But it did leak. Into the bottom of the boat went quite a lot of the water, mainly because I'd forgotten to tighten the union. I often forget to tighten the union nuts, and I don't know why, because I'm not entirely stupid. And you know what they say, old musicians never die, they just go out of tune. And that's the end of this episode. The next one features a live steam test. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.